Guys and girls, welcome back to Crime Scene Talk. Today I'm going to be doing um, some more commentary, watch and react to Forensic Files. I love the show so far. We're a couple episodes in, probably uh, f four, four episodes in. I love the watch and react stuff. That's one of my favorite genres currently on YouTube to, to dive into. And So I'm really excited about this one. I haven't checked this episode out yet. This is uh, episode two of the Forensic Files of season one. I'm excited about this one because it has, seems like it has, uh, I watched about 10, 15 seconds of it, has some shooting reconstruction type stuff in it, which shooting reconstruction is probably one of the cooler things that you get to do on a crime scene. So let's go ahead and dive into this show. Trey Cooley, I'm guessing we need to know that name. Oh, uh, that's why we need to know the names because that's the guy that got killed. This is how ballistics, lasers, and forensic animation solve the riddle of the magic Ooh, that's tragic. Just random thought. Him, the the kid that got uh, shot and killed at the age of 14. I think that was when I had fired my first gun. My dad had taken me to the gun range. And I just remember being absolutely petrified, shaking. I could not, I could barely control myself. After the probably 45 minutes of shooting that we did, it was almost like therapeutic. And then obviously to this day, uh, between my profession and uh, my skill set, firearms, is a big one of those, and I've always enjoyed shooting weapons, and they are a blast, pun intended. No, poor dad. I'm guessing this is a couple years after, and he still can't. That's sad. Poor guy. So they're air pistols. This must be an older school, different, maybe? I don't know if they're any less lethal than a regular firearm. It's kind of weird, though, that they're... They're harping on the, the air gun thing quite a lot. It's a blood curdling scream. Trey Cooley slumped to the floor, blood flowing from his temple. His baseball cap had a tiny but telltale hole prepared him for what he saw next. It's actually kind of interesting that they, they say that because, you know, as a police officer, you show up and you're in charge and you got to keep your cool and stuff. But when it comes to your own kids, rules are out the window, emotions are unbelievably heightened. Things get very difficult and very complicated when your own kids get involved in this stuff. I was really excited for this episode because it has some shooting reconstruction stuff and it's been nothing but a sad mope fest so far. Any place on a gun range at all is never safe anywhere. Where the bullet that killed Trey Cooley came from and to determine if the shooting was accidental or intentional. I guess we'll find out in the episode here. Just off the cuff, I'm going to say likely not. I'm going to go with accident on this one. That's way more likely. Another 80s, 90s mustache. From Trey's skull would provide some answers and raise new questions. This is a 45 caliber bullet after striking oh. a cement wall. It is badly mangled, especially when compared to the bullet that killed Trey Cooley. If there's little, barely any to minor damage, it's very possible that it didn't hit or strike anything prior to uh, this incident occurring. It'd be awful weird to travel that far and go through a wall and not have some sort of significant damage to it. Well, and here I am going to be wrong. <laughs> ah. Huh. Typically, we don't see much custom ammunition, if any. It's very, very, very rare nowadays, anyway. Police collected the weapons and ammunition samples from the shooters in the competition, Charlie, uh, which uh, increased the velocity. Increased velocity, feet per second. Ammunition were test fired and compared to the bullet taken from Trey Cooley's skull on the bullet that killed Trey. All shooters use a lubricating wax, but only one of the guns used a red wax. A editor named Dan Smith was using that gun on the day of the competition. And he was firing on this outdoor range, just behind the air gun building. But Smith told police he couldn't have fired the fatal shot. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. <laughs> I wonder if this is going to be some kind of ricochet. I mean, I guess if it's a hard bullet, hard-nosed bullet, and they increase the like density and make it basically harder for it to be, you know, less damageable when it's fired. Did it go through the building or what exactly happened? 
Well, another question that I have is, did they not find any bullet strikes anywhere in the in the building on the inside of the, the room there? Did it go through one of the walls? Is there a hole? Police were satisfied that Trey Cooley's death was an accident. There's a barrier between the air gun belt. This is kind of, this looks like a model. I wonder if they reconstructed a model to see how this could have happened. That's all. That's really old school. Uh, we would just use scanners and scan the whole place and kind of play around with it in the virtual world of computer. But it looks like they actually made a model. And what else is interesting is if this bullet is supposed to be harder than typical lead and copper, uh, lead core copper bullets, I wonder if it would make it ricochet a different direction other than just typically forward. There's a lot of stuff that when it comes to like angles and angles of impact, angles of, of exit on the way out of the, the ricochet, depending on what like what surface it strikes, depending on how fast it was going, what it's made of, what the bolt's made of. This is just, this is shaping up to be very interesting. There's a lot of variable. I'm sure it was an accident, but I'm sure he was negligent in some way, that guy that was firing. <gasps> Steve Irwin. Look at that. Look at that. I wonder if, I wonder if that is something that they actually used. That is like an, that is literally like a Gen 1 scanner. That is actually very neat. That's very cool. I can't make out what the brand is. Something that is basically a Gen 1 scanner. The scanners that we have now are, do a 3D rendering of an entire room takes like a minute and 30 seconds. And that's with like a dense point cloud. That thing, you can see how slow it was moving. These, the new ones, they just like, they're lightning quick, but that is actually fascinating. This is 1991. I didn't even know the scanners went all the way back to 90. I can't imagine how long that took. Probably multiple hours to do one scan. You can even see literally how basic the scan is, assuming that this is a picture of the actual scan itself. Like there, this is the, I mean, it basically gives dimensions, it looks like. That's pretty much it. Outside wall of the air gun building was riddled with bullet holes from all angles. Oops, uh, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about having different bullet holes. That would probably be a big problem if it's been like shot up a bunch. That's gonna make things really complicated. <laughs> if, you're sh if your shooting range has like massive, if you walk into a shooting range and like the walls are like completely shot up, <laughs> everywhere you look there's bullet holes, probably not a good gun range to go into. I'd walk right back out. That's a very shallow bullet strike, and obviously it's not super detailed, but that doesn't look like it's a... That's probably a ricochet of some sort. Irwin's laser survey equipment traced the bullet, the bullet's path from where he was sitting. The scanners don't do that. The scanners cannot analyze... This is interesting. Okay, I, I, this is kind of reaching in a way. I, scanners cannot physically track trajectory of a bullet that has already been fired. I'm not sure entirely what they're saying here, but run a scanner and you can see bullet holes in the wall and you can use, uh, you can use gun, their, um, bullet rods. Basically you stick a rod into the, through the hole and you can actually use that scanner technology and you can actually retrace kind of within five degrees, five, um, you can trace, basically use that, that bullet rod and it will, you can use technology with the scanner stuff now that will basically backtrace within five degrees of where that bullet came from. I'm sure more investigative work probably went through. They probably examined every single bullet hole and and strike and everything that was in this entire building to kind of line things up with what would have made the most sense. It seemed unlikely, but it matched the evidence. Which was roughly a straight line. Which is correct. You don't, if you have a surface and you have a bullet, bullets do not strike said surface and ricochet at an angle backwards or something like that. It either continues along its path and it deforms or it, um, not, I wouldn't say disintegrate, but it, uh, it breaks apart and it splinters and you have metal fragments that, if it's a hard enough surface, like if you're hitting steel armor, the bullet will just break apart. Um, and if it's obviously, if it's hard enough, if the bullet is hard enough to, to, uh, perforate the actual surface, it'll just go through. It will continue along that trajectory. The trajectory may be off significantly, but fire bullet against steel plate armor, it hit here and then it ricochet back that direction. That, that's not how the physics of shooting work. It, it, this would require beyond extensive studying and mathematics and all kinds of different stuff. They're just, they're claiming that, oh, it was you know, definitely this or definitely that. And oh, the scanner traced the bullet's trajectory through the air. And 
It's I, this is probably just a lot of dramatization for the show, for show purposes. For the TV, they can't say, well, it could have been this or it could have been this. They're going to say, it was this. They traced it exactly back to this point. It sounds like the downrange part part of this gun range is facing this building where these people were shooting inside of. That just blows my mind. If there's a building with people in it, you probably shouldn't be on that gun range shooting that direction, regardless of all the safety measures. Out of that range, and they accepted that fact and continued to shoot. Yeah, yeah, so okay. All right, so look, look, right here. We got the firing range. Instead of firing this towards this direction, they're firing back this direction towards the building. Tell me, does that make any sense at all? For a gun range? That's probably where they, that bullet came from. He probably had a stray that went up and hit, went through the building, ricocheted, and then hit the kid. Yeah, so if you fire in between the berm and that metal plate which says 16, 17, and 18 on it, you're going to hit the building with people in it. showed the bullet flew under the last battle over the berm and into the building. I mean, that, that's a great diagram. Because he's a human being? It was found in the gun itself. Close examination revealed it had been modified. Shocking. Most people that are in pistol competitions and, and rifle competitions and that sort of thing, they will completely overhaul their gear. Uh, and same with police sometimes even, where they will modify their trigger pull from like the standard five and a half pounds on a Glock for just per se. Um, they will change it to be basically like a pound, a pound and a half, which is basically you have a, if you have a twitch in your finger, I mean, it's going to fire off around. So no, that doesn't, Surprise me at all. And it helps the competition shooter shoot faster. Depending on... Yeah, this is another little bit of an overreach, I feel like. You can't just say that the every forty five caliber gun with every forty five caliber bullet just recoils up and to the left. I mean, that's just, that's not, that's just, that is way too specific of a thing. What Glocks are going to recoil different than Smith & Wessons, than Kimbers, than Six Hours. Um, a 9mm is going to be much different than a 40, which is going to be much different than a 45. Typically, 40s are some of the snappiest, snappiest rounds, like when you shoot. But you can't just generalize and say, I don't want to say you can't. This guy obviously did. I can't. I cannot generalize and say, oh, all 45 guns will, when you fire, they will recoil up and to the left. That makes no sense because even it varies from person to person. You put the same gun in three different people's hands, you're going to have three different types of recoil. So that makes no sense. An exact computerized reproduction exact. Of recoil for the animation. And so this is really cool though. See the, how the early 90s, some of the most advanced stuff did it? It's pretty cool. Yeah, this is just a complete tragedy. In a fraction of a second. Another shot is fired during the recoil phase of the original shot. It happens so quick. And that can make sense if he's modifying his, his trigger um, to have, you know, different poundage as far as the pull goes. I mean, you got to think there's a thing called a trigger reset. I don't know, depending on his model, if that's on there or not. But just the force alone, if you just, I mean, from the, the force of the shake of the recoil alone could easily make you pull the trigger a second time. Very quick. Feet per second. God dang. Through the aluminum siding, goes through a storage room, misses a broom and some pipe by less than an inch, and then breaks through a second wall, entering the air gun range. Then Man. the bullet does something unbelievable. It doesn't blast straight through into the roof. And there's a reason for that. Look at well, I'm not gonna get into the shooting reconstruction stuff here, but if you see how long how elongated this bullet strike is. It's a very shallow angle. So what happens is it comes in at a shallow angle. Even though it's drywall, what happens is it that friction and the tension will grab the bullet and it'll spit it back out. I've done multiple trainings where we've shot drywall and um, it will it will ricochet off a of drywall, off of soft, soft stuff. It will ricochet right off of it if it's at a shallow angle. This, in this case, this is a very, like I said, very elongated 
a very shallow, very shallow angle. This is a pretty standard bullet strike and deflection. This is all consistent to today's standards of shooting reconstruction stuff. That's 10 degrees is almost a perfect angle for something like that. Like a 10, de 10 degree angle of deflection. Man, that is just a lottery ticket of bad chances. And just think of the odds of that having to happen and him sitting right there. That's just, the, the odds are just unbelievably small. Was impressed with the visual and computerized evidence. Huh? It's kind of an interesting point too. You know, you show all this stuff back in the early 90s. This, that's a lot of work and that's a lot of new techniques and a lot of new stuff. So I'm sure the people sitting in on that were probably like, whoa, this recreation is wild. What is court? Basically, you're putting on a good show. You're going to lay out your investigation and you want to present well. I mean, a lot of times that's what makes or breaks your case is a presentation. The Cooley's attorney says the forensic animation and model explained this tragedy in a way nothing else. To be fair, shooting reconstruction nowadays would probably come to that same result, to be honest. Um, I can't say for sure, but... I mean, all of the stuff that they did and looked at and figured out, all the investigative work, that, I mean, that's all solid stuff. So, I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that, you know, somebody probably nowadays could take all the data that they took and probably recreate it the same way. Fully understand what had happened to his son. It's good closure for dad. I mean, obviously it's not good. He'll never forget it, but, I mean, it gives him closure. I wonder what happened to the Dan Smith guy. As it did with the hard walls. Shallow angles. Literally that soft ceiling tile. It's just angles. That's all it is. I mean, it's like I said, you could recreate it over and over and over and over. Um, put a piece of drywall, shoot it at a very, very shallow angle. And it's going to, it's going to deflect almost every time. Poor dad. He seems way more upset than, than mom did. Three million bucks. That doesn't, doesn't get their kid back. Yeah, that place never should have been a shooting range to begin with, sounds like. Good episode. All right, so guys, that was an episode of Forensic Finals. That was episode two. It was called The Magic Bullet. It had a ton of stuff that I could just kind of really drive, dig my teeth into as far as the shooting area construction stuff goes. All very cool stuff. Um, just to kind of recap, they actually figured out that this bullet was fired from a firing range. For whatever reason, this firing range was set up to be shooting at a building, essentially, even though there was a, I mean, that was their, that was their first mistake is making it so they're just having shooting competitions facing a building with people in it. I mean, just an absolute terrible set of circumstances that led to this kid getting hit by a stray bullet. Basically, he, he this guy was positioned perfectly. So it just went below the, the backstop and went above the berm, went through the building and ricocheted. And so, I mean, there's too many, there's so many factors that play into the bullets and the angles and all this other stuff. And obviously the guy had his, his modified pistol that was probably modified for a one or two pound trigger pull, which, uh, I mean, shooting competitions, competitive shooters, I get it, but really nobody should, nobody beyond that should be modifying their pistols to that extent. But and this is not the first type of error that I have personally seen, or I, don't, I wouldn't say experienced, that I've personally seen or heard of where somebody modifying their gun has produced a casualty. I loved the scanner. They had the, the basically like the first generation of scanners in there doing kind of its little rotation thing. We have basically a supercomputer compared to that old thing, but hey, it did the job. And to be honest, like I said, all the, all the trajectory, all the shooting stuff, it looked great. The shooting reconstruction is fascinating. Um, this is one of the better, actually, out of the five episodes I think this is now, this is probably the best one so far. The science and the, and the forensics and the uh, shooting reconstruction that they employed is kind of like the grandfather of the shooting reconstruction that I do now, which is really cool to see. So all that equipment and all the mathematics, and obviously there was way more that went on behind the scenes, but it was just generally very neat to watch all that stuff go on. And I mean, clearly these guys worked their butts off and did a very good job with everything involved in it. So obviously got the dad some answers but yeah those were kind of my overall thoughts on the episode the forensic files episode uh number two season one and that was called the magic bullet great great episode love digging my teeth into it so 
you ended up like if you like this stuff if you searched for it you found it you watched it all the way through do me a huge solid but drop me a like drop me a comment drop me a subscribe do any of those things i would much appreciate it i i thoroughly enjoy all the love that you guys have given me so far you guys enjoy the rest of your day and i will catch you on the next one